Let's say you have a video and apply a mosaic effect to it. But wouldn't it be cool if, instead of a square, the grid had a circle as a base shape to create a more interesting pattern? Or what about a pentagon with a transparent fill? And on top of that, you could rotate the grid and use the footage luminance to give it a halftone effect. But wait, you could also define any image or even any image sequence as a base shape to achieve a mosaic effect on steroids. I'll start with a straightforward approach that requires no complex expressions just a touch of basic 4th grade math. For those who have already experienced my earlier halftone effect tutorial where we created a simple setup emulating Sapphire's halftone plugin, complete with sliders for adjusting the dot grid density and the rotation while keeping the dots crisp, we're gonna update this template to add color to the dots. And to round things off, I'll be demonstrating a comfy solution for using any image file as a fundamental dot shape. Let's jump right into After Effects. First, drag your footage into the comp window, which creates a composition automatically. For easy calculation, make the composition square with 1000 by 1000 pixels. I'm gonna name the composition Mosaic Plus. Reposition and resize your footage to your liking. Precompose the footage layer and make sure that the move all attributes into the new composition is checked. Name it Footage. Deselect the footage layer by clicking into an empty area. Select the ellipse tool and double click on it to create a perfect circle. Then open Ellipse, turn off Stroke and change the color to white. Let's say our pattern consists of 50 by 50 dots. Therefore, we're gonna calculate 1000, which is the composition size, divided by 50, which results in 20. So the ellipse's size has to be 20 pixels. Reposition the white dot to the upper left, but to be precise, change the X and Y position to 10, which is exactly the half of the ellipse's size. Then add a repeater operator, change copies to 50, open transform repeater and change X position offset to 20. Duplicate the repeater, open it, go into transform repeater 2 and set X position offset value back to 0, but Y position to 20. And now we have a dot pattern. Select the shape layer, precompose it and name it dots. Turn off the footage layer and apply a car dance effect to the dots layer. Set rows and columns to 50, which corresponds to the dot grid. Then set gradient layer 1 to the footage layer and set the drop down next to it to effects and masks, because it'll take the effects into account that we're gonna add later to the footage layer. Open X and Y scale and set both sources to intensity 1. And look at this. The card dance effect takes the footage's luminance to control the individual sizes of the dots. The dots shrink in darker areas and get bigger where the picture is bright. When you add a curves effect to the footage layer, you can play around with a curve to control the scale of the dots. What we now have is basically a simple halftone effect. Now, how do we bring the original colors into the pattern? The solution seems easy at first. You duplicate the footage layer, delete the curves effect, turn it on and set the dots layer as its alpha mat. But when we have a closer look at it, we can see that each dot has a color gradient, but they should get solid colors instead. To achieve this, let's set the track mat back to no mat and apply a mosaic effect to it. Set horizontal and vertical blocks to 50. And then we can set the dots layer as an alpha mat again. And now the dots have solid colors. In case you can still see the squares of the underlying mosaic effect, reduce the highlights in the curves effect a bit to conceal them. And if you don't want the halftone effect, make the curve a horizontal line sitting in the center of the graph editor to make every dot have the same size. But you're not bound to a circle. You can go into the dots composition, turn off the ellipse path and maybe insert a polystar instead. Here I'm gonna change type to polygon and reduce the outer radius. What about switching on the stroke operator again, setting the width to 2 and changing the fill opacity to 75% to create a unique looking base shape. 
And after the repeater operators, you can add a wiggle transform, open transform, and increase the rotation, which gives each polygon an individual direction, and thus your mosaic effect a more interesting look. And if you want, you can also experiment with other shape layers and path operators. You can also check the transform collapse checkbox of the dots layer, set it as a parent of the footage layer below, and animate the dot layer scale, similar to what I've shown you in the intro. As you can see, the dots always stay sharp. And that was the simple solution to create a customized mosaic effect, and we didn't even use expressions. One downside of the solution is that it's cumbersome to change the density of the pattern, because you have to go through every effect to adjust the values. Also, you have to change the according attributes in the dots pattern. Here, I'm just doubling the amount of the dots to get a finer grid. To make the adjustments easier for you to handle, I made a tutorial on how to create this halftone effect template mimicking Sapphire plugin's halftone effect where you can not only adjust the density of the dot pattern with a single slider, but also rotate the grid, which makes it even more look like a typical halftone effect. When you followed my tutorial until the timestamp at about 15 minutes, this should be the latest state at that point. Before we update it to have colors, make sure that every layer scale is 100%. First, duplicate the footage composition, rename it to Footage Mosaic and drag it above the footage layer. Then add an adjustment layer and press Ctrl Shift Y to open the adjustment layer settings and change size to 2200 by 2200 pixels, which corresponds to the size of the footage precomp. Duplicate the adjustment layer two times, then select the footage layer, then the transform effect, go to the edit menu and select copy the effect with property links. Then paste the transform effect into the bottom adjustment layer, press double E, reveal the expressions that links the properties with the original transform effect, select all attributes except of rotation, open the animation menu and select remove expressions. And if there is an expression left that is not the rotation expression, then delete it manually. Next, select the dots layer, select the transform effect here, and again, copy it with property links. Paste the effect into the top adjustment layer and also remove all expressions except of the rotation expression. Select the dots layer again, double press E to reveal the expressions, click into the rows expressions window and copy the expression. Select the middle adjustment layer, apply a mosaic effect to it, open the layer and the effect, alt click on the keyframe stopwatch of horizontal blocks and paste the expression into it. Same goes for vertical blocks, then select all adjustment layers. Do it from top to bottom, not from bottom to top, which is crucial here to maintain the layer order when you copy-paste them. In this case, we're gonna cut the adjustment layers by pressing Ctrl X, go into the footage mosaic composition and paste the adjustment layers here. Right-click on the adjustment layers, select Transform, Fit to Comp, then go into both transform effects to reset the anchor point and the position. Back in the main composition, select the footage mosaic layer and set the dots layer as an alpha track mat. Set the composition's background color to black so we can see the effect a bit better. If necessary, select the footage layer, turn off the invert effect and play around with output black and output white of the levels effect to adjust the dot sizes. Decrease output white to conceal the squares of the mosaic effect. And if you don't need the halftone effect, set both black and white output to 127. And now we have updated the template to have colors. And similar to the previous expression-free example, you can customize the style of the dots. But because there are a lot of expressions, you cannot easily change the dot shape. Don't worry, I have a comfy solution for you. You can have my updated halftone effect template for a little support. The new version comes with additional features, and I've organized all the controls into one single pseudo plugin. And you can super easily customize the dots. You can even use bitmaps or video sequences as dots. But first things first. The template comes in two versions. 
the round dot version and the custom dot version. And each version has an HD and a 4K composition. Choose between HD and 4K if computer performance is crucial to you. The round dot version doesn't allow you to customize the dots, but you can set a finer pattern with up to 500 dots in a row. The custom dots version can only handle 225 dots in a row, which I think is okay for most cases. First, you throw in your footage into the insert footage here composition. Scale your footage to match at least the comp height or comp width depending on your footage's ratio. Like in my old template version, you can adjust the density of the dot pattern, set the rotation, and when you're missing dots at the borders, you can scale up the footage. The invert checkbox doesn't make any sense yet, because both the dot size minimum and the dot size maximum values are set to 127, which are the default settings when you want the dots to be of equal size. But when we decrease the dot size minimum, the dots in the darker areas shrink, and when we increase the dot size maximum, the dots in the brighter areas grow, which results in a halftone effect. So, playing around with these two values is like adjusting the contrast. And when you check invert, it's now the brighter areas that get the smaller dots, and the darker areas the bigger ones. And when you uncheck original color, you'll get the pure halftone effect like in my first version template. You can even set your own color here. Now, let's check original color again. The cool thing is, you can go into the insert dot shape here comp and throw in any footage, like this metallic sphere that I rendered in Cinema 4D. I recommend to use grayscale footage so that you don't tinker with the original color of the footage. Then, back in the main comp, duplicate the dots custom layer, turn it on and choose one of the blending modes that fits best to your footage. In my case, it's the soft light mode that gives the dots a shiny look. Before I play it back, let me adjust the contrast and increase the number of dots. Hit play and that's it guys. Hope you like this tutorial. See you next time.